Hello everyone, the 316 Lego Maniac 316 here with another Morphin Monday Lightning Collection review. This time I got the, let's see what it's officially called, the Mighty Morphin Ninja White Ranger. This figure is a Target exclusive, but was also up on Hasbro Pulse for a time. It might still be. Uh, retails for $24.99 on Target, and maybe I think like $26 or $25.99 on Hasbro Pulse, at least when it was still up. Uh, anyway, so far, uh, as of the time of this recording, all of the Ninja, or Ninjetti, as I'm going to refer to it from here on out, figures have been either revealed or released in stores and online. Now, I found him in stores because uh, I didn't pre-order him, and they had a ton of online and in stock so I thought I might as well go to Target grab one for myself instead of buying one online for a very specific reason so from my understanding the issues with these figures there have been a multitude of different issues from heads not being included two of the same head being included two of the same fists being included uh, thankfully I don't have any of those issues but these are the first batch of figures that have been made in Vietnam. So if I take, let me grab Dino Fury Red here, and I forget which foot it is. It should be this one. If I take this light here, there you go. You can see that that says China. Hasbro SA China. You can clearly see that said China. So when I take a look at his foot here, should be the bottom one, I guess. That says Vietnam. Now, the only other uh, major change I noticed is actually the hook on the box. Now, this is going to be difficult to see because it's a clear piece, but you can see how weird that hook looks in comparison to uh, this hook on the Dino Fury Red box. See, that one's like nice and circular. This one is like uh, oddly shaped. And I know I have them on their sides, but I'm doing my best here to show them off. Anyway, uh, one other thing, I actually had to change my lighting setup so the light wasn't as uh, strong because, you know, white gets overexposed. So uh, anyway, I think that covers all of the uh, differences in production. Although it is possible that the uh, different warning labels in the bottom left corner on the box there are different but we'll take a look at that when we get to the box section anyway this figure and all of the other ninja figures come with a ton and i mean a ton of accessories so there are three different heads let's start off with the ones i do not have on the figure so all three heads for the transformation of the ninja or ninja t figures uh, comes with all three versions of the head. So you got the, uh, you know, the bandana one that was most prominently featured in the MMPR movie. You also have the uh, hooded one with a uh, mask of some kind, and then you have the fully hooded and uh, like identity hiding one. And uh, what's nice about this in these figures is that they also come with some extra uh, like upper body. Uh, inserts so that it doesn't look as weird with just a head on a ball pegs and basically so you can have the figures with their hoods down so like if I took this head it you know it meshes it looks good you know it looks like it's going from the head to the body smoothly like it would in the actual show or the movie and this one can also be used for this head I'm not going to be swapping the heads for this, but just so you can get an idea. Now, he also comes with a neck swap for that head, which we'll take a look at in a second. Anyway, last couple accessories. You get two karate chop hands. Uh, these are not the ones used out of the box. These ones are actually in the plastic. Uh, this one's oddly curved. Similar thing with that one. That one is slightly different, but it is a new... Uh, karate chop hand piece. Let me grab one here. I thought I had an extra one. Hold on. Okay, so this is an old school karate chop hand. If I can 
get the light to focus on it. There you go. You can see the lines on the glove, and it's nigh completely straight, and the thumb's in here like this. Whereas with this one, it's uh, it doesn't have the lines. It looks more like you know, like a glove that you would get at like a sports store. You can see all the line work on that. Uh, and lastly, you get two fists. Some people have gotten two of the same fists, but these fists are also different. Thankfully, I do have a fist that is not on a figure currently, but you can see no lines. It's supposed to look like the gloves, which is really nice attention to sculpting detail. Last accessory you get here is this new effect piece, which is very thick. Like, it's not hollow. It's completely, like, you know, just solid. What that does is allows you to put an effect piece on the foot. You can put this on either foot. You can also stick it on one of the uh, karate chop hands, but basically this is supposed to look like, you know, they're kicking upward. And you could do it where they're kicking downward, but it just wouldn't look right. But you can totally see that that's what that would look like. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. Let's take a look at the actual figure with the uh, standard head, or, or rather the one that is uh, used in the box. So. I have played around with this figure a bit, and this figure actually looks pretty good with the heavy shading. You can really see all of the mold marks and attention to detail. Uh, thankfully, the light isn't like completely obscuring all the detail because this looks really nice. You know, these figures, which we will see in the uh, size comparisons, are a bit smaller than regular Rangers, but not by much. Uh, just going to give you a nice view here. Now there is one major molding mistake, or rather ne neglection. So if you look at the uh, gauntlets here, count how many diamonds there are. One, two, three. Down here there's only two. Basically Hasbro sculptors or whatnot, they don't always use the most accurate or up-to-date uh, you know, uh, concept material or you know, official costumes even. So sometimes they just go on Google and find like the first image that pops up for this particular costume that is in a decent amount of lighting or uh, quality. So, you know, it, it does bug me knowing that they're still not getting the appropriate like source material for this stuff. But, you know, they ended their partnership with Toei, so I can't completely blame the sculptor. But ay ay ay. Anyway. Really nice paint work on here. Some people have gotten some pretty nasty paint detailing and paint work on these figures. Uh, but, you know, considering these are the first figures produced in Vietnam, a, a, a new factory that may have just started, it, it's, it's understandable. But anyway, this head sculpt has, like I said, a neck connector that just covers up the the seam lines, basically, so that it looks a bit more natural. What's really nice is that these um, tied bits here are on a ball joint. So that you can make these look like they're blowing at the wind. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some articulation here. Now, I know what you're saying. These joints, they look a little weird. And yeah, they look weird, but it it doesn't bug me. It's a weird sculpt. It, it makes sense. But anyway, he's got his, uh, I believe this is the falcon on the front here. And uh, here's the back of the figure. Again, looks a little weird. Not by much, though. Uh, this is a rubber piece up here. This isn't molded. This is... It's its actually a bit softer than this rubber piece. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me take off this head, because I want to show you that I honestly don't know which way that this neck attachment is supposed to go. So I kept it on like this. Although you can put it on like this way. If I can stick it on. And I mean, it looks about the same. Like, it's it's really hard to tell which way it's supposed to go. And while you can use it for the other two heads, it really doesn't work. So, uh, I have to put the heads on off camera because some of them can be a bit of a pain. So here it is with the just, like, civilian head Tommy, which I don't think looks anything at all. Like, just a different Frank. But you, you can see that, like, it does work, but... There's just a lot of like uh, open space between the head here and that piece, so I I wouldn't recommend using that for 
Oh god, the head almost didn't come off there. I wasn't forcing it or anything. Anyway, so this neck attachment. This one's at least easy to tell how it goes on because it's on the back of the box there. And damn, get on there. Okay. So here's civilian Tommy with that. Looks pretty good. Ooh. Sometimes I fear I'm going to break one of these. Oh, also, this does have the new uh, peg joint in here. And this whole joint actually moves. So this is rooted into this slightly rubberized piece, but then that is rooted into the torso. But this whole section moves a bit freely. So that is a new articulation joint. And for the rest of this review, I'm going to use this head because I don't want to take heads off anymore. Which is the one from the... Uh, mid-sequence of the transformation for the Ninja Rangers. Uh, which I think looks the best. Although I'm kind of growing on this one, which looks pretty nice. I don't know why this is in focus. Get that out of focus. All right, articulation. I've held it off long enough. The only thing different between this figure and a standard Lightning Collection figure release is this midsection. So there is no crunch. You still get the side-to-side, -side, but it's not on a crunch and a upper body movement. Rather, if I can pull this up, you can see that this is on a dumbbell joint. So this whole upper body has no articulation. It's basically just dumbbell with a ball here and a ball here and then the um, connector here. But, you know, you can get them into sort of different poses. I mean, you can tilt them, but it doesn't like to hold. But, you know, you get the full 360. And what I didn't realize before uh, starting this video, not this video, but b before until I get this figure in hand is that they also use the new drop hinge uh, ball joint on the legs. It's hard to tell, but you can see that the legs, when I pull on this leg or this leg, the other one goes up just a little bit. But what that does is allow you to get a bit nicer of a kick. I know that some Ranger figures have had a hard time kicking like this. Uh, yeah, but with these guys, it's not too bad. And if I could get a good view in there, you can kind of see what's going on. So you can, but you can kind of see that that's definitely not just, a, you know, like a dumbbell joint in there. It's definitely two separate joints that are connected differently. So this one is connected to the back. This one's connected to the front. Uh, it, it, you know, I wish there was a little bit more room for them because it's not as, uh, you know, noticeable. Like, it helps, definitely, with posing, but sometimes because of how big this joint is, it doesn't uh, work just as well. Uh, these are inserted into the actual uh, rotation joint here, but they can be moved independently of that joint. So if you wanted to have them more forward, you could, or more back towards the back, you could. There is a little bit of give on this rubber piece, but it's mostly rooted in place. But yeah, that really covers all of the new posability. Everything else is exactly what you'd expect. So uh, new dumbbell joint for the head, so you can get a little bit more posability. Although because of the inserts there, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, the dumbbell joint here, which... No crunch, unfortunately, which sucks. And then the drop hinges. That's a basically about it to summarize. But anyway, I think that covers all of the figure. Again, on in Vietnam, that's new. Oh, also, I thought it was funny that the boots have the weird like toe thing. Ugh, creeps me out. Anyway, let me try and stand him up here. Sometimes he has trouble. And let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. So he stands at about just shy of six inches. Not too bad, and so let me grab a figure from off of my table over here. Hopefully it doesn't create a monsoon or a landslide. Come on. Eh. Eh, there we go. Most people were mostly interested in the Tango Warrior. This Tango Warrior is pretty big, but not, like, overly scaled. And he's not standing up for some reason. Stand up, you stupid purple bird. Anyway, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty big in comparison next to the Ninjetti. But, you know, if you wanted to have him attack the Ninjetti, you could... Ah! Ah! All right. 
let's go ahead and do another white ranger well technically it's a white ranger but i got spd omega back here omega's kind of freakishly tall looking anyway uh now this is an upcoming figure review this will probably come out after actually i don't know when it's going to come out because uh i have at the time of recording of this video it is it's going to go lunar lunar wolf and then dino fury red and then cog and then probably this one so this one should come out this next review should come out after uh the one i'm filming right now anyway uh we have the Mighty Morphin White Ranger, which I just got in the mail today, and yeah, his head's a bit wobbly, but anyway, that's it's not his review. But you can see that uh, actually the white is a bit different. So throughout the line, they have been using different white colors. So for example, like this white is more of a bluish color, whereas this white is a bit more of a yellowish color. So if I put them like side by side in front of the camera here, you can see what I'm saying. Like, this this is more of like a, just a milky blue, whereas this one's more like a lemony yellow. Not too big a deal for me, honestly. You know, white is white. Just different how it's tinted. And the uh, last Tommy figure I own is Zeo Red. So I don't have the uh, Mighty Morphin Green Ranger. And I feel like they released another one of Tommy, but it's not coming to me. Anyway, still waiting on uh, Dino Thunder Black. Hasbro win. <laughs> but yeah, I think that covers just about everything I wanted to take a look at for the figure. So let's take a look at the box again. Uh, first time in Vietnam. So if there's anything weird about the box, let me know. Uh, obviously it says here, poses require support because of how this is posed. Uh, now, Hasbro has been trying to do their plastic-free packaging initiative. There's the Lightning logo. Uh, it does say Mighty Morphin Power Rangers up there. There's the front of the box. The top is black, oddly enough. It's more of like a blackish gray. There's the bottom. But anyway, plastic-free packaging. I know I'm kind of going all over the place here, but let me open up this box so I can show you that it is a little bit different with the plastic. So the plastic is kind of inlaid a bit more, so it doesn't go all the way to the front of the box. There's a bit of a dip there, which is a bit strange. But, you know, maybe this is their way to combat the amount of plastic that's in the box at the moment. Because, you know, all of the boxes, you know, they're all nice and detailed and designed specifically for that specific Ranger. Maybe that's to just uh, ease the transition, I guess. But... I keep my boxes, even though I probably shouldn't, but, they, you know, they look nice, but if they go to uh, completely boxed and plastic-free packaging, I'll probably just throw them all out. Anyway, I think that this figure is mostly good. Uh, I, I think the issues for me, though, just come down to the quality control problems. If you can, go to a Target, get one in person, get a nice one. Otherwise, don't buy this online. Don't take the risk. Uh, just be careful, pretty much. Uh, that 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 uh, that covers the review, though. Thanks again for watching, guys. And don't forget, this guy should be next week unless uh, video uh, timelines change. So I, I can't fully recommend this figure unless you someone who really likes the movie or. You know, Ninjetti was always your favorite as a kid. Or, you know, you have a Tango Warrior and you need someone for him to fight. So, uh, again, try to find this in person. And I know that blue and black have been coming out very sparsely. Although there, uh, there, there, there is a chance that orders may be uh, completed next week on the... The, the, the week of the 23rd to the 27th of May. I have seen some people getting like uh, updates to their shipping orders. But anyway, enough rambling on. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you liked it. It also helps people find the video. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when videos like this are uploaded. As always, Lightning Collections on Monday, more for Monday. And uh, don't also leave a comment. You know, if you like these figures, if you're getting them, or if you have problems with these figures or if you'd like to see me do 
uh, a different type of video review, let me know. But thanks for watching. Peace.